Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We are back with more Cobra Convergence 7. And this time we have Ryan from the Island of Misfit Toys. So, Ryan, please introduce yourself and tell everybody uh, what you do and where to find you. I am Dreadnought Ryan. I am the Island of Misfit Toy Collectors. You can find us on YouTube. I also am one of the co hosts of A Toy Kind of Mood. Uh, we review G.I. Joe classified figures, some modern figures, and also O-ring from time to time. Um, just absolutely a huge Joe fan. I want to thank this gentleman right here. He was actually one of the, the folks that got me back into G.I. Joe to make it cool to collect toys once again. So thank you, Hooded Coco. Well, <laughs> well, thank you, and thank you for being here. Um, and you're back for Cobra Convergence, um, and as you said, you are one of the co-hosts for Toy Kind of Mood. So in that capacity, um, this is a return, isn't it, for you for yes, um, yes. for Cobra Convergence. So um, for those who missed it, uh, talk about your previous experiences with Cobra Convergence, kind of how you got involved and uh, what that was all about. So I found your YouTube channel, I'm going to say right around 2009. Um, so you doing the reviews, doing some of your live streams, I'm like, this is really cool. And then when you put out the first Cobra Convergence, I'm like, this is really awesome because you, a lot of YouTubers back then will just say, didn't open up their their subscriber base or their fans to other YouTube channels where Cobra Convergence brought in a whole bunch of different channels that folks didn't know. Born BX257, I mean, you had Joe Berg, just a number of different Joe channels. So I have been a follower of Cobra Convergence since day one and have been absolutely in love with it. And having the chance to do Toy Kind of Mood and then my own this year, it's like, you know, it, it's the dream that came true. So really oh, that's exciting, though. That is awesome, and you mentioned some some great channels um, that I've been privileged to work with, and I'm glad I'm glad that you enjoy it. I hope everybody else enjoys it too. Um, Form BX two five seven and uh, Timmer ha from Half the Battle, uh, the three of us kind of we were at the start, and um, I think all of us have been uh, very pleased with how it's grown, and I'm thrilled to have you in now for a second year. Uh, so that's that's really awesome. Uh, so um, for those who are unaware, we are recording this, of course, before Cobra Convergence starts. So uh, so you will see this on the day that Ryan's uh, presentation for Cobra Convergence goes up, uh, but we're recording this well early. Do you have some thoughts, feelings, or ideas on what you might do for Cobra Convergence this year? So, uh, well, since this is recording early, I do need to kind of you know preface this i've already started recording and 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 what i'm going to do for cobra convergence is zartan is my favorite gi joe character he's been tied to cobra of course he's tied to the dreadnoughts so i'm going to go through the evolution of zartan from the o-ring figure uh to modern and then into classified and then of course you know i'll you know create my ode of love to zartan and and why i think he's you know, the best figure that's ever been made by Hasbro. So, Oh, that'll be awesome. Zartan, you might say, is a fan favorite. So the, there, that is a deep well that you can draw from. That's really cool. Um, and you you uh, go sometimes by uh, Dreadnought, Ryan. So uh, what what's your, what's your fascination with the Dreadnoughts? You know, when I saw the commercial for Zartan and... Of course, the color change feature was like, as a kid, you're just like, this is the most amazing thing ever. And I remember when we went to a Kresge, uh, which is was a subsidiary of Kmart way back in the day. Um, and he was on the shelf and he came with the swamp skier. And then you read the file card. And Larry developed so much depth for a lot of these characters. And as a kid, you weren't talked down to back then. So if you didn't understand a word, you had to go look it up. So we had to get the dictionary out and you had to actually find out what all of them were. I think for a lot of kids, if you ever felt like an outcast or you're not part of the crowd, I think that's another reason why Zartan kind of always, you know, was, was the figure I was attracted to. I was an only child. Um, 
I lived on a big four lane highway, so I didn't have neighborhood kids to play with. So, you know, it, it just, he just sang to me. Um, and then of course, when the rest of the dreadnoughts came out the next year, it's like, these are awesome. And then Zorana and Xandar, and I was hooked from there. The thunder machine was like, okay, I'm done. Well, you, you touched on what my next question was going to be. Uh, I was wanting to um, ask you about your experience with G.I. Joe as a kid. Uh, uh, what was that like? You say you didn't have a lot of neighbor kids to play with or anything like that. So uh, how did you how did you get into it? And um, kind of how what was your play experience like with G.I. Joe back then? So for me, you know, um, I was born 76. So by 82, I was in that perfect range. And I had a lot of family and friends of my parents who either served in, you know, World War II or were in Vietnam. So those folks always meant something to me. So when 82, when they came out, you saw the commercials for them and they were those, you know, cartoon mix with here's a comic book. You know, Joe was like the first comic book I ever had. And then they came out with the Sunbow series so you had two parallel running storylines that you could flip back and forth from. But as a kid, you know, I'd get done with school. I'd ride the bus home and I'd have to walk home. My dad worked third, so he was sleeping. So I had that time frame from when I got out of school to when my mom would get home where I would play with my toys or watch TV. And G.I. Joe was always the first toy line that I went to. Um, you know, you'd, you'd play with your house plants and you put your Joes in there, or, you know, the, the best play spot was behind the couch. Cause it was a cave or, you know, and I had the house all to myself. So it was just fun. And that's that play pattern always just kind of kept building from there. And every time I, I we could go to the store and I could get a Joe or, or, you know, for your birthdays or for holidays, you'd get, you know, a vehicle. It was just awesome. I think for, 82 83 um i got the dragonfly and then the next year i got the sky striker and it was just like downhill from there uh that's i mean that's fantastic um and uh, gi joe was uh, an introduction to comic books in general for a lot of people me included um but uh i think a lot of us also had a period where we kind of got away from uh, toys and and what we considered kids stuff but then as adults we came back into it um what was it like coming back into it uh which brings you to where you are now oh gosh it was probably 2008 um we were shopping in a kmart and my wife's like you know take dylan over to it's our son you know let him go look at toys and i, I go down the aisle and it was the modern version of G.I. Joe, but they had that throwback to the card back of, of mm -hmm. our generation. And just seeing those on the pegs again, it was, I, it took me back to being seven years old. And I was just like, oh my God, it's G.I. Joe. And, and, and <laughs> then I'm using the excuse of, yeah, well, my son's only three, but he'll play with these in a couple of years. We, we can pick up a few of them. Um, and, and then, you know, you go onto YouTube and I find your channel, I find Kevin's for Form BX257 and you guys are going through these great reviews and it's just bringing everything back. And then Joburg's like, it's okay to play with toys. And that, uh, you know, the, the feeling you get that, you know, I would see you're, you're kayfabing that you're a toy collector back in the day because you didn't want people to know because it was embarrassing. Uh -huh. um, that kind of went away. And then I started going and buying figures and, you know, it made me feel good again, um, happy, magical, whatever you want to say. Um, and then I discovered that's why kids are so much happier than adults because they use their imagination and they play with these objects and it makes them happy and they don't care what anybody thinks. So uh, that, you know, a lot of you guys, I blame for, for hooking me back on this, this drug we call plastic crack. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, I, um, I think I, I think Joe Berg should share some of the blame with uh, for that. <laughs> those, those guys are great. I, I love Joe Berg. Um, so, but now you are creating content um, on, uh, about toys. Um, how did you kind of get into that? What inspired you to actually appear on the internet with you with your face, just as you are now? So, a, a buddy of mine, Chris, he uh, he had had his own YouTube channel. 
and we we're like you know he's like hey let's let's create an island of misfit toy collectors where we can just talk about the stuff that we like and so robo skull had come out uh for the, the you know the pre-order for the kickstarter and i think that was that was the first show that we did um and it was just like you know hey let's just go have fun i don't care how many people we get to view i don't care how many people subscribe to it it's just we're going to talk about the stuff that we like to it and the, a lot of shows you'll see, or even in social media, there's there's a lot of negativity out in the community right now. Um, so I didn't want my channel or our channel to be negative. So we try to bring more of the positives um, and try to remember what is so great about this community and toys in general. So that's how it started. And then it's just kind of grown from there. I mean, I've met you know Zazel from Sergeant Slaughter, uh, you know Slaughterhouse, Ken from Toy Connection, and you know, Great just guys. build out more and more friends from here. Um, I got to be on a show with, uh, you know, Sergeant Slaughter. I, I got to meet Ron Rudat, Mark Pennington, you know, things that I never thought could happen because of YouTube. So it, it, it's, it's been just awesome. That, that is fantastic. I, I'm, I'm really thrilled for you. And I'm really thrilled that you are here. Uh, you mentioned um, Robo Skull. What kind of what what um, what non GI Joe things are you into and that uh, inspire you? You know, mostly it's been GI Joe, but the, the the Indiana Jones figures that have just come out. I I was always a, a, a slap slappy for Indiana Jones. I just thought it was a great movie. I, I number two, Temple of Doom is not my favorite, but you know, one and three and, and then four, it's, it's okay. But I just loved Harrison Ford in those movies. I, I loved Harrison Ford in Star Wars too. So, um, but, you know, I picked up those figures and I'm, I'm picking and choosing on those. Robo Skull, it's, when I found out about the original Robo Skull from Palatoy mm -hmm. as an adult, and I saw what Action Force had is it, when we were kids, I'm like, you know, there's this stuff's way better than what the Joe stuff we had. And I thought that was great. And then you meet Ben, you meet Mark, you know, uh, Chris uh, McLeod was involved with it. And then you see this giant flying death skull. And I'm like, I've got to have that. <laughs> and they brought so many people from the community together. You had Marauders, you had, you know, Grindstone Toys. And it's just a super positive, you know, project that they're building. And they're the only ones that figured out, hey, we can put O-ring, we can put modern four inch, and we can put six inch into a vehicle. And I didn't hear any collectors whining or crying about it because they were all into it. So uh, you know, that positivity just keeps help building. And, and now I just can't wait to get my two skulls and I can put them up in my display and take a whole bunch of pictures and do some videos on them and, you know, go in the backyard and play and put them in the car seats and drive them around town. So. <laughs> uh, I, I have seen it um, uh, at shows at conventions. It is sizable. It is it's pretty special. Um, and uh, and and you mentioned um, I guess for a lot of North American Joe fans may not be aware of what Action Force had in the UK. They had some of the same stuff, some of the same stuff, but they had some of their own stuff. And um, yeah, check that out, you, Joe fans. If you're not turned on to uh uk action force especially the early stuff there's there are some surprises there and robo skull is one of those surprises absolutely the um, uh the apc for z force i mean oh yeah the, the that that you know bill and or, uh bill break it added on to that it's like that's just perfect we, can we get that here in the states you know um they turned uh, the, you know, um, uh, uh, the Minesweeper, oh, I can't, Tripwire into a pilot for the right. Fang, and you're mm -hmm. like, that makes so much more sense. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, they, great toys. I mean, it just shows you how G.I. Joe was more than just the U.S. It was it was worldwide. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, and that's something that hopefully people are being, uh, having their eyes open to is that um, even though for at least where I live, it was called a real American hero. It was everywhere, everywhere, anywhere in the free world where a kid could get a plastic toy, it was probably there. So um, even though somebody may live on the other side of the world, they may have a, a play experiences as a kid just like that. Yes, absolutely. 
So um, Phil from Treasures for Triggers sent this to me, and this is actually a Japanese G.I. Joe uh, Polar Battle Bear. Um, so I had to go and find a, a vintage snow job to put on it. So this is one of my most cherished pieces in my collection because a friend thought, hey, I'm going to send this to you because, you know, I sent him a couple classified figures. But, you know, that's what makes G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe is it's your buddies, your community looking out for one another. When somebody's down, you pick them up. You don't kick them. You know, that's what this community has been about for, for so many years. And I want to see that it continues that way. I, I hope so as well. I hope so as well. So you are, uh, you're collecting uh, classified and other things right now. What, what, are the, what currently, like what, what right now is hot in your, uh, in your collection pickups? Um, I just recently got the uh, retro carded Storm Shadow and Zartan. Oh, yeah. No, I haven't seen those. Oh, nice. So now here's the I, other thing. I collect Gridiron. So uh, if you don't know who Gridiron is, they are a third party company, Mark Bakun and his sons, but they create the accessories that can go with your G.I. Joe figures. And, you know, they have this loadout kit, which is nice. the classic Storm Shadow loadout kit. So um, I have my ultimate Storm Shadow. This is a brighter white than what the classified line release was. He has mm -hmm. his hands without the gloves. It also comes with, you know, the hand with the throwing star plus grip hands, too. Um, but, you know, just an amazing figure. The Zartan, knocking over everything, is a great callback to uh, the cartoon version. So you yeah. get the blues, the, the reds. He has the, the bright green eyes, which I think are just amazing. Um, so, you know, I'm happy with both of these retro card figures. I hope we get some more throwback types for those for the classified line. But... I think Lenny and and crew have done an amazing job in updating and still staying true to what they, we had for a real American hero. Me too. Me too. I, I um, it wasn't that long ago when we had no GI Joe at retail whatsoever, and now we've got all of this. Uh, it's it's really thrilling, and I'm I'm really happy to see what's going on. Um, so the, the question I ask everybody, but I think you may have already answered it, um, is, uh, who is your favorite Cobra and why is it Zartan? So again, with Zartan, I think I just reading that file card and then understanding uh, the loner aspect, but also having like the different personalities. He had the depth instead of just the, you know, I'm a bad guy. You understood why he was bad. You understood the pain that he went through. And you could sympathize with him and you could see that, you know, he was bad, but you know, oh, he's still, there's still a little bit of good in him. And then Larry writing the comic books with him and just some of the stories that he expanded on when, you know, he, he killed, you know, the snake eyes master and, and you found out why he did it. And then, you know, even with some of the other comics that he's come out with, it's just like that character is, the closest thing I think to, to you know like the, the vigilante Batman, but you know, um, but my favorite Joe character I think we share this in common is Stalker. Yeah, uh, I remember getting comic book number one. There was a comic book store near my grandparents' house, and he had it, and I picked up I think one, three, and like four. Um, but Stalker, I found out he's from Detroit, which is you know Detroit, Michigan. I, I'm from Michigan, of course. He becomes my favorite. But then you start reading his backstory, you read his file card, and you see, you know, where he came from. And again, I could relate to a lot of that stuff from him. And plus, you know, uh, let's be honest, Duke is a great leader. But in those early comic days, Stalker was the leader. Absolutely. And, and he was the one that held everything together. And then when Larry wrote the, you know, the comic with Stalker, Snake Eyes, and Storm Shadow all together in Vietnam, it's like, oh, this is just gold. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, uh, do you remember uh, who was your first uh, G.I. Joe action figure that you got? <sighs> Torpedo. Torpedo. Okay, yeah. cool. Huge cool. fan of Jacques Cousteau and uh -huh. Omaha, Mutual of Omaha's you know, where they would do the animal shows back in the day. My grandpa and I would watch that. Um, underwater was always big for me. So I got Torpedo, 
that figure was just absolutely amazing. Uh, for for it's those cool. who weren't around uh, in '83 when that line came out, um, th- when you we when you can actually get GI Joes that weren't all green, uh, it was like a revelation. You had guys uh, in white, you had guys in tan, you had you had torpedo in the black and gray. Um, it was like uh, it, I mean, the first wave of GI Joe was awesome, um, but mm-hmm. that second wave just was amazing so torpedo that that is awesome that is awesome um so a reminder to everyone cobra convergence 7 uh this is ryan there will be a link to his channel uh in the description of this video so make sure you check him out um he's already given us uh, a hint at what he's doing for cobra convergence 7 and by the time you see this it should be up, so go check it out immediately after this. Go check it out. Subscribe to his channel. Um, so, uh, uh, but you you've been uh, involved in a toy kind of mood for a bit. Talk about that relationship and how that's been going. So those are those are my brothers from another mother. Uh, you know, KJ, Tony Figs, great customizer. KJ, Bobby. Um, you know, we just kind of all met through this community and. You know, they they invited me on, you know, what's on the Terradrome because uh, we, you know, I do a lot of custom figures too. Um, and, and we just kind of all have bonded from that, you know, just talking to each other on Facebook or Instagram and, and you build those relationships. And then Travis is like, well, you need to come on our show. And I'm like, okay. And then from there, it's been, you know, I think over a year now that we've all been kind of just, you know, bebopping in and out, uh, you know, just with each other. And they're great guys. It's great. Um, I, I think classified figures brought in a bunch of new collectors that we didn't have in the Joe community for a while. Um, so getting some of those those that fresh blood in, fresh ideas, I think has been good for for a lot of folks. So um, the more the merrier. And then let's just keep this brand going, you know, for another generation. Absolutely. That's that's my hope. That my hope is always that we will bring in the new fans and that we will have another generation of fans. Uh, but you're also on the Island of Misfit Toys. Uh, for those who are just about to be introduced to it, for those who don't already know, talk about uh, that show and what you do there. So I do figure reviews, and then we also get together from time to time. We have a streamathon crew again with you know Sergeant Slaughter, uh, Zazel, Ken, Treasures for Triggers, Adam from Go Figure. We also have Kelly uh, Slaughter, you know Sarge's daughter, which we'll do from time to time. Um, I did not too long ago, you know, in, uh, interview Ben Conway from RoboSkull. So it's, if you want Joe News Classified, what's coming out, I have that information out there too. Um, just want to keep everybody informed, show you some great, cool figures, and then invite guests on. I'm hoping to have Brian on sometime soon. After Joe Fest, Cobra Convergence, we get through all of this stuff. Um, just to, you know, shoot, shoot the breeze and, and talk G.I. Joe. Uh, that that is awesome, and see, this is the importance of a show like this. I am no good at disseminating the news. I, I'm I'm not. Uh, the truth is, I'm not. I'm not your your hard hitting uh, journalist with the uh, finger on the pulse of of the news. So um, so that's great, and uh, I would encourage everyone. There is there's a lot of stuff going on with GI Joe right now. A lot. Um, and, uh, and someone like Ryan is more on the cutting edge, uh, with, uh, with what's happening. So, uh, so I, I try to point f- uh, folks towards, uh, towards you and towards people who are actually, um, uh, hip and up on the news because I, I'm always behind. I'm like two weeks behind on everything. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you're a busy cool. man. I mean, you're um, a busy man. Give me uh, uh, Sometimes, uh, but, um, but yes, uh, so Cobra Convergence, a reminder to everyone, Cobra Convergence for the entire month of July. Um, Ryan from the Island of Misfit Toys will be presenting for us. You should check it out. Uh, link will be in the description of this video and his uh, presentation will be up probably by the time um, by the time you see this. It should be at the same time that you see this. You should be able to roll right over there and, and, uh, and check it out. So um, I think... I think it's about time to wrap it up. We're close to, to time, but um, what I'd like to do uh, before we wrap it up is to give you the floor. 
uh, to say anything, uh, any last words that you might want to say. Last words, maybe not the best choice of word. That's, that implies that you're about to pass away. I mean, any closing thoughts uh, to thank our audience? I want to say thank you to you, Brian. Um, bringing the community together, giving us all the opportunity to showcase what we do is huge. Go to hoodedcobracommander788.com. Look at the calendar and please review all of the content creators. It's every day in July. It's worth it. You're going to get to meet new people that have great content. Timmer is, is absolutely hilarious. You know, the, the stories that have been put together over the years, it, it's, you know, from America's ass to, you know, everything else, it's been worth it. Um, but you'll also get to meet other people in the community who put out some amazing videos, you know, podcasts, not only YouTube channels, but, you know, it, it's just... It's a great way to meet a whole bunch of new people and expand, you know, what you love on GI Joe. So don't miss it. Check it out. It's worth it. Next year, if you have a channel, you have a blog, you have something, reach out to this gentleman here and come and join us all. It's worth it. Well, thank you. And I'm grateful uh, to you. And I hope everybody heeds that because um, I do want to be inclusive. I want people to be in. Um, I understand that not everybody who collects is into the, the community thing, but if you are, there is a community out there to, to meet and to talk with and to work with. And I'm just thrilled to see you, to see everyone working together, uh, and building each other up. I, I just love it. So thank you. My, my gratitude to you for participating, uh, and, uh, for doing everything you've done for, for quite some time. So thank you very much. Um, hey, you get you get as much as you put in. So, you know, support one another. If you have the opportunity, do it. Uh, give people likes, give them subs, you know, give them a note. Let them know things are, you know, you appreciate something. If you don't like something, that's fine too. But just, you know, let them know that it's worth it for them. So. Absolutely. Uh, and with that, I guess we will wrap it up with one more reminder. Uh, check the link in the description of this video. Go check out Island of Misfit Toys um, and HCC788.com for the calendar of all of the presenters uh, for Cobra Convergence in 2023. Uh, thank you very much, Ryan, for talking with me. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with for Cobra Convergence this year. Thank you. Brian, and again, thank you for everything that you've done for the community. I hope you do have a great time at Joe Fest because we're taping this before. That's right. Joe Fest is if after you're at Joe Fest and you didn't sign his card. I'm disappointed in you. So if you, it's just too late, but just remember that. No, I'm kidding. The, the, car, the card will be there. That. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll have and, the card and Sharpies. So let everybody sign it. Uh, all right. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, and um, again, everybody check out his channel. And for now, I guess we'll wrap up. So thanks again. And uh, I guess talk to everybody soon. And we wrap, We should wrap up with a Cobra. Ready? Uh, three, two, one. Cobra! Cobra! All right.